Well guys, welcome back to a new video and if you do enjoy them, do take time to drop a comment down below, perhaps giving them a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel or you're old and a regular visitor and watcher of my videos, come say hello, pop a comment down below, let me know how your fishing's going. So what are we doing today? Well it's reasonably nice conditions, it's dull, it's my favourite type of, well, most anglers favourite type of conditions, it's nice and dull, light level is very very nice, not too bright. So we're out after some chub, after some barbel, just spotted a little robin there bouncing about on the tree. Lovely little bird. Anyway, yeah, so this evening we are out fishing into the cover of darkness and going to be hopefully getting in contact with some more barbel. Rod, as before, is the Advanta Ambush RVS. Seven foot, one three quarter pound test curve rod as paired with a 2500 size bait runner. Loaded with 12 pound line, gravel, drill and gravel braid hook link, low resistance running leisure. Nothing special, just keeping it simple, keeping it low resistance. And I also use a little way above the actual main rig, I use a flying back lead, which is just held in place with um, a little gripper stop below it, just to keep it away and separating from the rig. And also that helps keep that area of line all pinned down which is very important, in my opinion, to not be spooking fish or having any fish coming to your swim and giving you line bites. You don't want any liners, you just want full, bloodied and nice, confident bites. So that's the sum of it. Now, I won't bore you showing you the bait again. It is the mainline 50-50, mixed with a little bit of Activate mixed in and also some yeasty, spicy, <laughs> yeasty, spicy concoction and liquid foods of my own choice. I've uh, been rolling them and using them as a very hard hook bait due to the crayfish. So they've been air dried from 24 to 48 hours. Um, extra amount of um, egg albumen that I've added to that as well just to make it extra hard. But they're just being used as hook baits wrapped in the matching paste. Ground bait wise, got a nice bit of the mainline impact hemp ground bait. In with that, I've of course got some birdseed mixed in. You know that I like my birdseed guys. So yeah. Not sure how many swims we'll fish this evening. I'm hoping to do more than one, but it might be just one. We'll see how it goes. Ideally, we'd like to fish two or three. So, all going well, it might be two or three. If the first swim doesn't produce, um, then yeah, we are definitely going to do two or three, I'd, I'd suspect. But yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? Sometimes you don't know whether to spin the old roulette wheel, move to another swim, or to hold out and see if a fish does come and pick up your bait, which has happened on one of my previous trips. I... Um, Denard was going to move. Said to myself, oh, you know, have another sandwich, just wait. Just started packing away the litter from my sandwich, my foil wrapper, putting that in the rucksack, got up, and the rods just hammered round. And if I'd moved, I wouldn't have caught that fish. And then on a previous trip, which was a blank, I stayed in the swim far too long. So, you know, it's all swings and roundabouts. And it's a funny old game at times, but it's an enjoyable one. Anyway, that's the sum of it. I want to get in the first swim. I want to drop a little bit of uh, paste into the spot. And, um, yeah, get into position. Hopefully, we'll pick up a chub or a barbel. We'll be very, very, very welcome. We're in, guys. I think it's a small barbel, which is always good to see. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a little barbel. Lovely, I'll take that. Very nice, too. Absolutely hammered the rod. 
Oh, there we go. How about that for a lively whippersnapper? Tore off. I had a few taps. Rod absolutely tore off. And before I could get the camera on, and it's like playing a mini tarp on. Not the largest barbus ever, but believe me, guys, these waterways down south, this is the future, and this is what we require. It's nice to see some of the um, younger stocked fish, younger brood as such, coming through. All right, tow to it too. It's going to be a real nice. Well, it's already a nice looking fish, but it's going to be a real nice built fish when it matures. Very happy with that anyway, because it's been tough, tough going lately. So yeah, nice to get another barbus. No matter the size, a fish is a fish and a barbus is a barbus. Let's get this lively little chap slip back. Beautiful condition though, look at those. Lovely little barbules, lovely little baby barbers. Well then guys, all cleared up, all packed away. Did decide to move from that swim where I had that lovely looking young whippersnapper of a barbus and um, try another spot. This particular spot near me I do fancy will do a decent fish. Uh, it's got some nice tree coverage and a tree that's going right over the water and quite a nice depth in front of me and walking pace flow. But yeah, alas, no other bites. Um, I think I brought in one crayfish. Which is a good night, believe me, on my waterways if you're only bringing in one crayfish. Um, but yeah, I was really happy with that fish. I mean, I've had some tricky trips lately and it's always nice to get your eye back in regardless of the size of fish. I mean, of course, we all like catching large fish and I've been quite blessed with catching some large barbel on my recent vi videos, as you will have seen. But that said, that fish that I caught tonight was very important because it's those young barbel that are the future of our waterways and should that fish survive all what it's got against it be that abstraction be it regular pollution by the water companies Thames water etc and all the other things that are going against it that will be a future big barbel and you know regardless of the lovely doubles that I've been catching you know we, we both know they only have a you know a certain longevity and a certain lifespan and those fish will eventually die off those bigger fish and you need smaller and younger fish to be coming through the ranks. So yeah, very, very kind of poignant fish to catch tonight and very nice to see. And I've got to say, on a few sections of the river, there's been fish of that stamp coming out, which is great because if they're coming out in a few sections of that kind of size and new blood as such, that bodes well for the future. But only if we can keep looking after the waterways and as anglers be vigilant of keeping an eye on pollution incidents amongst many other things and you know we are the eyes and ears of the waterways so you know keep your eyes down and keep an eye out for any changes in water quality because the amount of corruption that's out there it's only going to be us guys that are going to be looking out for the rivers so yeah nice fish to have as I say, not the largest, but a very important one and a nice one after I've had a couple of very tough trips. Anyway, I hope I haven't bored you with the video. I hope you've enjoyed this short soiree and nice hard-fighting whippersnapper of a barbel. I am going to be heading off home, wishing at the moment that I brought a flask with me because it has got a little bit cool. Not too bad, but enough to make me put my beanie hat on and wish that I had a flask of tea rather than two bottles of... <laughs> Morrison's cold orange concentrate <laughs> uh, not the wisest idea was it anyway till my next video guys wherever you're wetting line wherever you're dangling hope you're getting a fair crack of the whip do let me know how your own fishing's going it's always nice to hear and um, yeah I'll see you on the flip side on another fishing for memories video take care goodbye